Welcome to this exploration of one of the world's most complex spirits, whiskey. Look at the range that I've got behind me, and that's just a small percentage of what's available on the market these days. Why whiskey? Why has whiskey become this global phenomenon over the past 200 years? Because no other spirit is so complex. No other spirit has flavours which range from the light and dry on this side right up to the big and heavy and powerful and peaty and rich and deep flavours at this end and every single point in between. Sure, there's other complex spirits out there, but they tend to be bunched up into narrower bands of flavour. Whiskey covers it all. Whiskey covers the world as well. We tend to think of it as just being Scottish. I mean, here I am, standing in a kilt. But it's also made in Ireland. Perhaps the Irish even made the first whiskies. It's made in America, where they call it bourbon or rye or corn whiskey. It's made in Canada. It's made in Japan. In fact, in the past few years, distilleries have sprung up in almost every single country in the world. South Africa, Australia, Taiwan, France, Germany, Scandinavia. Everyone is making and everyone is drinking whiskey. Why? Because of its flavour and also because it's got a backstory. Because there's history behind whiskey. It has provenance. It is crafted. It's not just some sort of industrial process where somebody is sitting in a distillery, pressing a button and out comes a spirit at the tail end. It's got a backstory and it's made by people. It's also a signifier of success. You can guarantee that if somebody has made it in life, what they want to do is to celebrate their newfound status, is sit down with a dram of whiskey and toast their own success and toast their friend's success as well because the great thing about whiskey is that it's convivial. It brings people together. It is, in a phrase, a social lubricant. That's what whiskey is all about and that is what we're going to be exploring. Not just how it's made, but why the flavours in whiskey are there and also how to enjoy it. A bit about myself. I first got captured by the whiskey bug years and years ago. My dad was a whiskey drinker. But it was really only when I was up in the far north of Scotland, in a car driving towards a Cayley or a dance, drinking from a bottle of whiskey, looking out over the Scottish landscape, that suddenly it made sense. Suddenly it was part of me. It was part of my culture. And because whiskey is this global phenomenon, amazingly, me, as a Scotsman, I get paid to drink. I get paid to travel around the world talking about whisky. I talk about Japanese whisky, about bourbon, about Scotch, about Irish, to spread the word because people genuinely want to learn. So what are we going to be doing in this course? Well, we're going to kick off with a little bit of history to tell where whisky has been and perhaps ask some questions about where whisky is going in the future. We're going to be talking about production, but not just in a dry way of saying this is what happens, just process. We're going to be talking about how distillers make decisions which will influence flavour. Because ultimately, you, as a whisky lover or as a newcomer to whisky, will be buying one of these bottles behind me because you like the flavour of that bottle. So we'll find out where these flavours come from. Hopefully this course will give you some greater knowledge, greater depth of information about what goes into these bottles. It will allow you to make a conscious and informed decision when you are walking into a bar or walking into a retail store and you're faced with this wall of whiskey and you're not very sure what to buy. That's what this course is about. It's about spreading the magic of whiskey. So where is whiskey at the moment? What's the state of the, of the world play? It's actually in a pretty good position as I'm speaking here. Scotch whiskey is beginning to grow again. There's a great renaissance within bourbon. Canadian whisky is finally waking from its slumbers. Irish whisky is undergoing a renaissance. And there's whisky distilleries springing up all around the world. Why is this happening? I would say it's because of flavour. Because you have a generational shift. If you want to divide the market into two, old whisky markets and new whisky markets, the old whisky markets tend to be the countries where whisky has been produced. So, the UK. United States of America, Japan, and certain countries in Europe as well, where whiskey had become part and parcel of the culture. Over generations, people were sitting there, sipping away on a dram. But during the 1970s and the 1980s, you see a generation turning away from whiskey. They don't want to drink what their fathers drank or their grandfathers drank. 
and they turn to vodka or to gin or to wine or whatever. And you see whiskey sales beginning to drop off in these mature markets. But the great resilience of whiskey is that Scotch whiskey, for example, has always looked out with the boundaries of Scotland or the UK. So new markets began to be seeded in. And these are the markets which are bringing a new generation, a new way of drinking and thinking about whiskey. So if you look at what's happening in Brazil or China or India or Mexico or Taiwan, these countries where whiskey was relatively unknown, you have a new generation of young people, and not just men, but women as well, coming to drink whiskey because they love the flavour of it. In some, they're drinking blended whiskey, blended scotch like Johnny Walker or Chivas Regal. And they're mixing it in Brazil with coconut water, in China with green tea. People are finding their own way to appreciate whiskey and the flavours of whiskey. In other markets, Taiwan would be a good example. This new generation of whiskey drinkers are beginning to drink single malt whiskey because they want this intrigue of, of provenance and handcraftedness. And intriguingly, what is also happening in those mature markets which have been in decline for the past 20 odd years, a new generation is taking off here as well, mainly because their parents didn't drink it. Maybe their grandparents didn't drink it either. They are discovering whiskey for the first time. And they are going in not in blended whiskey, but into single malt as well. And what is happening in the US is quite intriguing because the US smaller scale uh, whiskey industry but the bourbon guys, the guys who are making these fantastic, fantastic whiskies, the Beams and the Maker's Marks and the Jack Daniels and Buffalo Trace, are looking at premium as well. Because if there's one underlying theme all the way through this new renaissance of whiskey drinking around the world, whether it's in Ireland, Japan, America, Canada or Scotland, it is a moving up in people's expectations of what they want, which is high quality spirit. Case in point, South Africa. A new market in many ways for whiskey. A new generation coming in, that signifier of success. That's what whiskey is about these days, about exploring flavour. And the world of whiskey is continually surprising. Did you know, for example, that there's more Canadian whiskey drunk in America than American whiskey? Did you know that the biggest consumer of Scotch whiskey is France? And that the biggest single malt market in the world, or the fastest growing single malt market in the world, is Taiwan. This is a global spirit. People all around the world are finding their own ways of drinking it and enjoying it.